Hi, I am Mark Aldrino Pernasdoro from Pagbilog, Quezon. Join us and Cardinal Chito every Sunday on the Word Exposed on Jesscom TV. Maayong adlang! Ako di ay si Mimi Tagle Torres, gikan sa Stella Maris Academy of Davao. Ubani mi kaninyo ni Cardinal Chito kada Domingo sa The Word Exposed on Jesscom TV. Hi! Ako si Rene Boy Katubig, gikan diri sa Sibulan Negros Oriental. Uban ka na mo, ugang Cardinal Chito, matag Domingo sa The Word Exposed sa Jesscom TV. Friends, greetings of joy and peace. I trust that you are well. Please continue exposing the word with us every Sunday. Subscribe to JustCom TV, then watch and share the word exposed on your feed. Thank you. Ciao, mabuhay! You are watching The Word Exposed. Let us behold Jesus, the Word Incarnate, revealing Himself to us in the Sunday readings. Today is the 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time. The Gospel presents a familiar story. While Jesus was on His way to Jerusalem, ten lepers approached Him. Jesus, Master, have pity on us, they called. Jesus then instructed them to show themselves to the priests. In their tradition, it meant that they have already been healed and cleansed, which would require the confirmation of the priests. The story tells us that only one of the ten lepers, a Samaritan, returns to Jesus, glorifying and thanking God. Now, the Samaritans were a people looked down upon at that time because of their distinct observances. This, then, is a reminder that faith could be seen in unexpected people. But this is also a wake-up call. How about the expected people? Would the Lord see faith in them, in us? Faith becomes full and saving when we recognize with gratitude the source of healing and blessing. A reading from the second book of Kings. Naaman went down and plunged into the Jordan seven times at the word of Elisha, the man of God. His flesh became again like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean of his leprosy. Naaman returned with his whole retinue to the man of God. On his arrival, he stood before Elisha and said, Now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Please accept a gift from your servant. Elisha replied, As the Lord lives whom I serve, I will not take it. And despite Naaman's urging, he still refused. Naaman said, If you will not accept, please let me, your servant, have two mule loads of earth, for I will no longer offer holocaust or sacrifice to any other god except to the Lord. The Word of the Lord.
A reading from the second letter of Paul to Timothy. Beloved, remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David. Such is my gospel, for which I am suffering, even to the point of chains, like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I bear with everything for the sake of those who are chosen, so that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus, together with eternal glory. This saying is trustworthy. If we have died with him, we shall also live with him. If we persevere, we shall also reign with him. But if we deny him, he will deny us. If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. The Word of the Lord Gratitude from the Undeserving You know, Our world today needs to recover a true sense of gratitude and thanksgiving. But we need to go to the root of it. It is is easy to express thanksgiving or gratitude as uh, like a custom or almost like a cliche. But our readings for today bring us to the root of gratitude. It is true, it is pure, when it comes from people who know they don't deserve such a blessing that they have received. In the first reading, Naaman, the Syrian commander of an army, was found with leprosy. And through the insistence of a Jewish girl, a servant girl, 
Naaman went to Elisha the prophet and he plunged himself seven times into the Jordan River. He was healed. Our first reading depicts Naaman returning to Elisha, filled with gratitude, expressed in a gift that he wanted to offer. But Elisha did not accept the gift. Well, I guess Elisha was saying, no, this is a pure act of benevolence and mercy on the part of God. And no amount of gift could meet the grace that you have received. So it is not necessary. But we look at the attitude of Naaman. What made him insistent in showing gratitude to the God whom now he declares as the only God? There is no other God except in Israel. Well, who, he, who is he? He was an outsider, a foreigner. He was a Syrian. And uh, he was a military officer who probably has caused a lot of problems, not only to the Jewish people, but to other neighbors. And he was afflicted with leprosy. So all of these things amounted to his exclusion, not only from society, but from even the grace of God. But the unexpected happened. He, who did not merit or deserve any kindness on the part of God, received this grace. And there comes gratitude. Who am I to be blessed? Who am I to be graced? When a person feels entitled to a blessing, when a person thinks of himself or herself as someone who has a right to demand the blessing, when the blessing comes, that person might not be grateful. But someone so undeserving is surprised, is amazed unto gratitude. In the second reading, we find St. Paul in prison suffering because of the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ, whom he preaches to everyone. Imagine preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And what does he get in return? Suffering. But even the suffering in mission, as manifested by uh, St. Paul, is fueled by gratitude. He knows that he does not deserve to be called an apostle. He could be considered an enemy of the gospel and of the way that Jesus has presented to the, to the disciples. He contradicted that. But by God's grace, he is an apostle. And now even his suffering, his free embrace of suffering is an act of gratitude. And he says it beautifully. He, said, he continues his mission in suffering for the sake of the chosen ones who also deserve the grace of salvation. So it's no longer for himself, but it is an act of offering, of gratitude and thanksgiving to God who has called him, and also as an act of kindness to the many others who, like him, might be called by the Lord. You see, gratitude in suffering is also apostolic. So my dear brothers and sisters, does gratitude still have a place in your life? Are you still thankful for the blessings, the ordinary miracles of life? Check that. A person who is not grateful anymore 
lives in darkness, in a world where everything is about entitlement and there is no more surprise, the surprise that comes from grace that is undeserved and unmerited. The Proclamation of the Holy Gospel According to Luke As Jesus continued His journey to Jerusalem, He traveled through Samaria and Galilee. As He was entering a village, ten lepers met Him. They stood at a distance from Him and raised their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And when He saw them, He said, Go. Show yourselves to the priests. As they were going, they were cleansed. And one of them, realizing he had been healed, returned, glorifying God in a loud voice, and he fell at the feet of Jesus and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus said in reply, Ten were cleansed, were they not? Where are the other nine? Has none but this foreigner returned to give thanks to God? Then he said to him, Stand up and go. Your faith has saved you. The Gospel of the Lord Gratitude from the undeserving As I said at the beginning of this reflection, Without gratitude, without thanksgiving, life becomes gloomy, you know. But who, who are truly grateful? Only those who see God's mysterious action in their lives, made mysterious because they know they don't deserve such blessings. Like Naaman in the first reading, a Syrian, a military officer, and one with leprosy all elements that could have excluded him from any, any manifestation of goodness and kindness on the part of God. But the unexpected happened. He was healed. And so he was filled with gratitude and declared that there is no other God except the one of Israel. In the second reading, we find St. Paul filled with gratitude for having been called to be an apostle because in his former life, he persecuted the church and now he himself is suffering for the gospel. But he uses that as an occasion to be grateful and to continue to press on in his mission for the sake of the others like him who also deserve God's, an experience of God's saving action. Gratitude coming from people who see themselves as unworthy of God's grace, yet beneficiaries of God's surprising and magnanimous love. In the Gospel, we have the ten persons afflicted with leprosy. And according to the norms of that time, they kept distance from other people. So these ten lepers were following the law. They were hiding. They should not come close to those who were pure and healthy. But they heard of Jesus. And from a distance, from a distance, in their hiddenness, they cried out, to Jesus, mentioning his name and asking that he be merciful to them. This was an, an expression of what they have heard about Jesus, but also of their initial belief that Jesus could do something. But they were doing this from a distance, using their voice. They should not be seen. 
but their voice reached Jesus. And the unexpected happened. According to the gospel, Jesus saw them. How could he have seen them if he had remained distant? Aha! Jesus probably came to them, came near to them. He was the one who broke their isolation by coming close to them. This is a surprise and unexpected action on the part of someone who, as a teacher, knew the law and who promised to fulfill the law. But now he is showing the fulfillment of the law in a different way. To some, it might look like a transgression of the law. But he was fulfilling a law. He came to them and promised that they could be healed. In fact, they could already present themselves to the priests who were tasked to confirm any healing. And they did so in faith. And on the way, the word of Jesus became true. They were healed. One of them, realizing that, came back to Jesus. Thank God even paid homage to Jesus. And Jesus was surprised, but also was quite sad because 10 were healed, but only one came back to give thanks. And who was this one? A Samaritan. The people of Samaria were always looked upon with suspicion by others. They were even considered unorthodox by others. In fact, entering Samaritan territory was not allowed. <laughs> Being close to Samaritans would make you suspect or even impure. Now, this Samaritan, who knows fully well his exclusion, his being a suspect and being a leper, like Naaman in the first reading, everything, <laughs> everything was against him. But then he was the recipient of a magnanimous act of God's love. And knowing that, he just, he just had to return and give thanks. Pure gratitude comes from someone who has experienced pure grace, undeserved. So let us go back to ourselves. What do we think of ourselves? Let us remove from our minds all of this sense of entitlement that will blind us, make us blind to the many graces and blessings and miracles given to us by God. It's the month of October, a month dedicated to Our Lady. She, who was sinless, considered herself undeserving of God's love. Who am I to witness in my life the great things God has done for me? And so, her Magnifica is a model of gratitude coming from a humble servant. Let this month be filled with gratitude, but let it be filled by also a humble acceptance. We are poor, poor creatures and sinful people. We don't deserve God's love, but it's given to us anyway. All praise to God. The word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it.
computer geek was how the people who knew Blessed Carlo Acutis described him. But don't be quick to judge, brothers and sisters. His computer savvy was something worth emulating. Carlo was only 15 when he succumbed to leukemia in 2006. Yes, it was a short life, but one lived with a purpose. As typical of millennial teens, Carlo was interested in technology, specifically computer programming, website creation, layouting, film editing, and yes, video games. He owned a PlayStation. But this interest in technology was matched by his devotion to the Blessed Sacrament. He attended the Holy Mass where he received communion and spent a holy hour before the Eucharistic Lord on a daily basis. In 2005, Carlo completed his truly laudable project, an online catalog of different Eucharistic miracles from many parts of the world, which we may view and download for free from the websites miracolieucharistici.org and carloacutis.com. You see, Carlo used the language and technology that he knew well, that of computers, in bearing witness to the Eucharistic Lord. What does the Church teach about technology and communications media? Carlo showed us how it can be done even as an individual. What do you post on your social media? What content are you creating? I hope we could follow the example of Carlo. May our posts and content be always aimed at the spread and support of the Kingdom of God and all that it promotes. If there is a clout that we should like to increase, May it be the clout of goodness, charity, justice, and truth. In 2020, Carlo was beatified in Assisi, where he is buried out of his admiration for St. Francis. At St. Peter's, Pope Francis said of Blessed Carlo, Indeed, Blessed Carlo is a model for the young people of today. But let us also call on parents. Carlo would not have been able to do all this without the support of his parents. Carlo's parents, in fact, were not exactly as religious as he. But having seen their son attending masses, praying the rosary, going on pilgrimages, and being close to the handicapped, children and beggars, somehow they were inspired. His mother specifically said that she started to go to Mass again because of her son. So parents, please support your children and join them in what would become your common journey. On the 12th of October, we will celebrate Blessed Carlos Feast Day. May he inspire us as he inspired his parents, friends, and all the people who experienced his help and those who saw his online catalog on Eucharistic miracles. Blessed Carlo Acutis, pray for us. We have prepared reflection points for you. Please share them with your companions. The first point is, is gratitude a part of your daily life and spirituality? Ang pagtanaw ba ng utang na loob ay bahagi na iyong apang araw-araw na buhay at spiritualidad? The second point is, 
What factors make people blind to the blessings they receive? Anong mga bagay ang nakakabulag sa mga tao sa mga biyayang kanilang natatanggap? Heavenly Father, You have blessed this humble program with a decade of mission on air. You have gifted it with the talents, hard work, and financial support of many generous people so that as your word is exposed, many more may know, love, and serve Jesus. Lord Jesus, be with us always, your production staff and partners, your viewers and benefactors, that we may not run out of courage, zeal, and charity in fulfilling our mission daily. And when our limitations and weaknesses surface, please ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit to purify us and set our hearts on fire with renewed faith, hope, and love, so we may serve you for many more years to come. Amen. Friends, thank you for your company. We pray that the Word of God would find fulfillment in your life and His blessings be always upon you. And we hope you could be with us again next Sunday here on The Word Exposed.